tell me about when people snore, is there an association with the degree of snoring, how loud the snoring is, how bad the snoring is, versus with obstructive sleep apnea? For almost all patients, kids never read the textbooks, so they always follow <laughs> a different uh, set of rules. So children don't necessarily have to snore on a nightly basis and really loud. If they do, and you can hear them outside of the bedroom door, that certainly is suggestive. And certainly in adults, we always look for a history of habitual snoring, nightly snoring. What does habitual snoring mean? You know, a lot of people will say, well, you know, I snore every so often, maybe if I have a cold. But if you're talking about nightly snoring, uh, that's what we are really concerned about. I tell people the degree of snoring, if you wake up your neighbors or the ceiling starts falling down on you because you're, you're snoring so loud. Uh, is loudness of snoring? Does that correlate with obstructive sleep apnea also? It can. It, it's not all the time. So women don't often follow the same pattern. So you don't get a... a a strong history sometimes of a lot of loud snoring. Sometimes there's an observation of about unusual patterns of breathing. Uh, maybe they just seem to pause or stop, but not but they're really struggling to breathe or snoring loudly. When people have sleep apnea and they have the apnea part where they're, where they're not breathing, uh, do they always <laughs> wake up with a jerk? <laughs> well, you often will get this. Sometimes the bed partner becomes concerned and reaches over to say, well, they don't yeah. see a whole lot of movement. Yeah, as soon as they touch, there's a resumption of normal breathing. But what we really like to see is that, that sort of classic sort of snort arousal. And I think that is an important history to get because that relates to how sleep apnea long term becomes bad for you.